Hello, my name is Chris Lemaire, and I'm one of the programmers at the American Cinematheque. Uh, and I'm very pleased to welcome you all to our virtual panel for I've Never Been to New York, which is part of our um, 14th annual German Currents Film Festival. Uh, before we introduce our filmmaker, cinematographer, and star, I just want to start by thanking our partners over at the Goethe Institute of Los Angeles, who have basically made this entire uh, festival possible. Uh, the whole team have, have just been wonderful to work with, uh, and we're very proud of the virtual selection we've programmed with them. Uh, now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce the director of the Goethe Institute, just to say a few words. Let's welcome Lien Heidenreich Seleme. Hi, everyone. My name is Lien Heidenreich Seleme, and I'm the director of the Goethe Institute, Los Angeles. I would like to thank our co presenters, the wonderful American Cinematheque, and all their staff, without whom this festival would have never been possible. I also would like to thank all of our amazing partners, the German Consulate General in LA, the Friends of Goethe, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, German Films, and our media partner, Deutsche Welle. I'm very excited about this panel on the wonderful film I've never been to New York as part of the German Currents Film Festival 2020 today. Films can have many functions, and one of them, I think, is escapism. I'm sure the film was not made for this purpose, but what could be a better escape during a pandemic than watching a fun musical with sing-along hits set on a cruise ship. We will now watch the German Currents Festival trailer followed by the discussion. Please enjoy it with me. Hello and good morning from Los Angeles. Uh, my name is Thomas Mukus and I'm uh, excited to uh, moderate this panel today. Ich war noch niemals in New York. I've never been to New York. Uh, and um, I'm happy to welcome director, filmmaker, Philipp Stolzl, cinematographer, Thomas Kinast, and our surprise guest, uh, actor, and also screenwriter, Michael Ostrowski. So may I please ask the panelists to start their videos and let me quickly introduce the panelists. Uh, Philipp Stölzl, Munich born Philipp Stölzl uh, started his directing career in his 90s and directed music videos for Rammstein, Madonna, Faith No More, Aha and Mick Jagger to name just a few. His feature film debut was in 2002 with Baby followed by North Face, uh, The Physician, Der Medicus Erased and Young Goethe in Love. He also directs opera for prestigious festivals, uh, including the Salzburg Osterfestspiele and opera houses all over Europe. And he is the recipient of the Bavarian Film Award for Ich war noch niemals in New York. Hello, Philip. Um, next up is uh, Michael Ostrowski, Austrian born, Steiermark to be exact. Uh, he plays Fred, the Maskenbildner in Ich war noch niemals in New York. He has an extensive list of TV and film credits, including Nachtschnecken or Slugs, the unintentional kidnapping of Miss Elfriede Ott, and the long running TV series Four Women and a Funeral. Michael is also a screenwriter and received an Austrian Film Award in that category for the Unabsichtliche Entführung der Frau Elfriede Ott. Hello to Austria, Michael. 
Hello. And last but not least, Thomas Kienast, who uh, this is his third time here with us at German Currents Film Festival. He uh, was previously a guest with uh, The Dark Valley and Three Days in Kibaron. He won a multitude of awards, including two German film awards, a German camera award, an Austrian film award. And for TV, he uh, is or was the director of photography for several Tadot episodes for Women and a Funeral and the international series Maximilian. And uh, one fun fact about Thomas, I looked it up on Wikipedia. He is a very competitive board game player when it comes to Mensch ärgere dich nicht. I can say that from my own experience. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, let's jump right in. We have half hour. I just want to say all the guests that are watching this panel on the bottom, you have this Q&A button and you can put your questions in there. Send your questions throughout the panel so we don't wait for the end for a Q&A. Whenever there is a question, just pop it in there and I can ask the panelists. Philip, um, how did you get involved? Ich, uh, in, ich war noch niemals in New York. Uh, what made you want to bring uh, the musical, which is based on the smash hit uh, stage show from Hamburg to the big screen? Well, the, the, the project has been in development for a, a pretty long while. Uh, the, there was another director attached. Um, they, they had, you know, quite some problems in, in, in getting it um, ready for screen because the, 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 the musical is, uh, was a huge hit on stage, but it was more like a, like a review. It didn't have really, it wasn't really focused on storytelling, but more on the, on the, on the, on the songs, basically. It was a bit like a, like a concert with a little bit of story inside. Um, so, um, you know, getting it on, on the page, right, was, was really a, a, a big, big, big task in, in this um, case. And um, as, as, as sometimes happens, the, the, the other team gave up after like three or four years of development. And um, then I, I got, the, you know, it came on my desk and I was a little scared because, you know, the, the, the songs are, you know, it's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a jukebox musical. So this, the songs are not written for a story. There are songs that often have their own little story in it. So it is, it's not really music that is perfect, perfect for, you know, a, a musical with a storyline where the, story, the music has to tie in with the storyline. So, um, but I was sort of tempted because I've, I've done so much music videos. And um, as you, um, you know, were telling before, I'm, I'm, half of my professional life is um, on, on, an, on, a, on, a, on a stage musical directing operas. So I, I was like, this is a chance once in a lifetime to, to combine uh, my, my passion for music and for singing uh, with my, um, you know, um, with the filmmaking side of my um, um, work as an, as an artist. So, and so basically I said yes. And then it took another really two and a half years of hard development till we got it right. So it wasn't, it wasn't that of an easy um, process to, to get the script right. But um, once, once that was done, you know, the rest was really fun. I was the most uh, the most fun uh, shooting and making the movies uh, I ever had in my life. You, you just said that uh, the storyline that, you know, originally it was a review musical uh, which premiered in Hamburg and uh, the storyline was a bit different. How much did it change from the stage show to the film now as far as the storyline and the character development? Uh, a lot, I'd say, because the, the, the show, the, the stage show, didn't really have a you know solid storyline. It, it basically, more or less, my feeling when I watched the show is like after the intermission, there wasn't any story anymore. It was just like the, the, there was a pretty complicated storyline bringing the characters on the ship, and then on the ship there was sort of nothing to negotiate anymore. So in a, in your, if you like me, uh, spend a lot of time of your life in in developing scripts. It wasn't really, it was really badly developed. And um, basically, you know, getting the screenplay right felt a little bit like, um, you know, if you have an old house 
and you will just you know you would just make sure the facade would look the same but inside you put a totally new and modern house that's a little bit the way it felt because obviously um you know the the main um you know we wanted to keep the characters we wanted to keep the ship we wanted to keep the you know the love stories um so we want to make sure that like the people who saw the show on um on on stage would go on the movie said like ah yeah it's 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 a little bit different but it feels like the same story but everything else like 90 percent um needed to be reconstructed basically and you did a wonderful job i thought it was a very uh, magical and you know romantic and fun story and i i, I think a lot of uh U.S. audiences that I, I spoke to who saw it at the drive-in or who have seen it streaming here, they all liked it and really uh, I think it also translates to the U.S. market and I really like that about uh, uh, the version that you put on, uh, even if you don't know Udo Jürgens, I think it really it's a universal story that translates here. Um, Michael, how did you get involved in the project and is this your first musical and how, how was it about you singing and dancing on the show? Well, the funny thing is, as Philip told you, the, this whole thing has a long, long story. And I was first approach, approached by another director to be a screenwriting, a screenwriter and to rewrite an existing script. And I'm, I even went to see the musical in Munich. And um, I was a little shocked as well by the story, to be honest. Uh, because uh, the, the songs, I've, I mean, I've been a fan of these songs since I was a kid you know everybody knows it I I even met uh, Udo Jürgens and went backstage and in Vienna and so on so it was really something that I wanted to to do but then it just all fell apart and 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 Philip took over which was I think uh, exactly the right thing and uh, I don't know two years later he called me up and asked me if I wanted to audition for this part that that was the whole story and that was um marvelous I think I mean for me did you actually end up uh, working on the script also on the final uh, uh, version or not not maybe? really not really but I uh, in a way we we kind of developed it further during um, rehearsals when we were reading the script and we were talking about the character I actually was a little reluctant to play this character first just for myself because I thought it shouldn't be too much of a you know, for caricature, uh, he should be a real human being, and it, it. But still, at the same time, it should be a little over the top because it's a musical. So I was really trying to get it right, and so I think for my character in this, we did some really important changes in the last uh, months before shooting. Uh, but that's just something for me, you know. So, but this had to do with uh, Philip's way of working because he all kind of um, he uh, took us in, you know. We developed it uh, with uh, Alexander Duduna, the um, the screenwriter. We kind of really worked on it. So for me, it was very important to do this. Let's quickly talk about your character because uh, for the people that haven't seen the film yet, uh, you are playing a flamboyant gay character. And what I liked about it, it was a nice balance. It was not about being flamboyant. It was about connection. It was, it was about relationship, but it was about love. And, and can you talk a bit about uh, how you prepared for the character and how you got into it, but also how you then uh, rehearsed uh, and uh, you know, how long you rehearsed and how you got into the musical numbers? So, um, uh, well, we did a, yeah, I mean, I've rehearsed for all my life in a way for this, not just not the gay character, but I mean, I think I've always been, I've, I've done an operette in the Graz Opera. I've always been kind of attracted to using Udo Jürgens numbers in our uh, stage plays. I mean, it sounds funny, but I think this has been part of my kind of upbringing and culture in a way to watch musicals. And I've, I'm not really a singer. I'm not really a dancer. And that's, uh, but what I liked about Philip's approach that he wanted to have actors playing the roles and try to be truthful to, to the emotions and the story. And I found it actually uh, quite easy to play all the, the love part of it because that's clear. And, and for the other things, I mean, uh, I've 
you know, I've talked to a lot of makeup artists. I've, I know many makeup, my own makeup artist was a kind of Fred, you know, so <laughs> it's not hard to find uh, role models for being a flamboyant uh, <laughs> a makeup artist, you know. Very nice. Uh, Thomas, we've now seen uh, this is your third project, as I said, here in Los Angeles, and you've worked on so many different projects, you know, from epic films uh, that you've done with Andreas Prochaska uh, to this intimate portrayal about Romy Schneider last year. Um, so how was this now different? How, uh, how, how did you get into, into Ich war noch niemals in New York? And what were the challenges working on that? I think it was filmed mostly on a soundstage. Uh, so can you talk a little bit about, uh, you know, where, you know, all the projects I've seen in the past, you know, they're all this big project outdoors, but this was a very studio film. So can you talk a little bit about uh, how you um, got into it and what the initial discussions also were with Philip about storyboarding and then um, the challenges you might have faced? Oh, many questions. So yeah, first, of all, <laughs> <laughs> first of all, I'm a huge Udo Jürgens fan uh, and that helps a lot. So. Um, and to be honest, to do a, a film, a musical film uh, in uh, Germany, Austria, uh, in Europe, uh, it's really unique and um, you have to do this. This is absolutely the best thing a cinematographer can do for cinema. So um, our first um, step into it and our first meeting with Philip was uh, we want to do a, a real musical film for the, for the screen, uh, for the big screen. So we searched, we, we watched a lot of uh, old uh, musical films, Hollywood films. So how did it, uh, that, how was this storytelling? So, and we finally come to the conclusion that, that, that we want to do um, uh, a really, uh, how to can I say, a static camera and a, a, a really heavy camera, which is not moving a lot. It's not that there are no many static cam setups or something like that. This is really, a big crane shots and 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 wide shots and also the the close-ups are not uh, just a, a medium close-up so uh, all these things uh, were important for us to tell the story and to give the the audience the maximum of of cinema of feeling the cinema and of course this is absolutely the brightest film i ever done um it's also a political thing uh, uh, with the producers uh, of course uh, because you need a lot of light and uh, this a normal uh, German film uh, setup is uh, well, for big movies like that, but we need it much, much higher. So on, a, on the stages, we had an enormous amount of, of, of light hanging around. Uh, but I guess we did it, Philip, uh, on 36 days or 35 days. Wow. So this was really less days. And for the big shots uh, with the uh, ship, uh, ship deck, um, so we had uh, three different lighting situations on a shooting day. So we needed everything on computer uh, based dimmers and so on. So this was a tough job, but it was really, really funny. And uh, I saw some photos of you in the pool with the camera. I saw some like uh, aerial, like this aerial shots from the deck. Can you talk a little bit about how you created those? Uh, um, you know, the above the, 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 you know, the deck shots and all that. Yeah, on a, on a, on a um, I don't know. It was three, three weeks before starting shooting. So we were in the, on the big stage uh, with the ship, the, uh, ship deck. And we said, okay, we want to do this and that, and the camera has to move from here to here. And we said, okay, this is impossible with our uh, schedule because it's so tight. Uh, and also this this deck was built up three and a half meter. So every crane shot and every techno crane shot is uh, really a huge uh, amount of time. So, uh, and so we decided to think about uh, what, what we can do with a, with a sky cam. So, you know, this is a, a camera system which has uh, four points uh, in a, in a, on a stage and you can move the camera everywhere you want with a joystick. So it's with ropes and uh, it's stabilized head for the camera. So we uh, tried out that and uh, this works really pretty well. So it's like in a football stadium, you can, you can uh, fly around uh, over the whole set and can go everywhere you want. So this helps a lot to, 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 to reduce the setup times. So for those big scenes, uh, how, what were, what, Philip, uh, what was the biggest or the, it seems like a really large cast. I mean, there was the, 
the, the, the, the, the main cast, but then there, it seems there was a lot of extras. And what was the largest you had actually in the studio for, for, for you know, in New York? I, I actually don't really recall it, probably on the street and the, 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 you know, for the finale on the streets in, New York, where we shot uh, this. This one was also shot on soundstage in um, in some lot in Sofia in Bulgaria. That have a beautiful New York street, and I guess we had about I don't know 150 people or so. It doesn't. I've actually done so many larger scale movies that it didn't feel that much to me. These are sort of, um, um, but it was. You know, anyway, if you if you if you with extras, you have more than two hundred people, and anyway, it gets sort of exhausting because it's like an army. It's like you you spend hours in just moving the people in the right place and moving them out and feeding them. So this whole shoot, including the extras and the cast, felt sort of tight and and smooth. And so you sort of you, as as Thomas mentioned, you know, I mean, we we shot it in thirty six days. It's not that much. Um, and um, but you you sort of you you understand the you know you get a get, get a sense of the beauty of shooting a movie entirely on a soundstage. I mean that's that's when you look at the old movies like I don't know Lady from Shanghai or so where, where where you know filmmakers technically couldn't couldn't leave the lot, but or Casablanca, you know, is a, is, is a movie that's shot in I don't know twenty two days or just entirely on a lot, and it's, it's sort of it's a time where. Um, movie making was sort of with one leg in a theater or was still with one one feet on stage and um, not you know because you had to work with a sort of very um, limited um, um, uh, number of locations and then you would wouldn't have all these shots that 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 you would have you know, in contemporary movies that make a flow like you know aerial shot a car moves from A to B Etc. So you have to concentrate and making your scenes that are on your limited locations, making them that strong that they, they carry the movie. So there's no excuses here. And this this sort of it's a very contained way of uh, um, of filmmaking and a very contained way of uh, creating your narrative. This was one aspect that um, that made it so interesting for me. The other one was that I obviously the the the, the, the sort of the movie has a lot of singing, but it has a lot of, you know, fast comedy as well. So, and obviously, you know, our homework in prepping the movie was not only in, um, in, in watching all the, you know, great American masterpieces like Singing in the Rain or American in Paris, etc., etc. But also, um, we watched obviously the masterpieces of screwball comedy, like um, Bringing Up Baby, etc. And um, the interesting part is that, that like this type of comedy, it's also has very little editing in it. So it's it's mainly shot. You know, see two actors, um, you know, playing, do great acting and fast talking in a medium shot that is not cut. So that was another a huge inspiration. I felt like okay, let's let's explore that type of filmmaking where you you don't you know rely too much on getting it right in the in the editing suite. Or getting the you know creating the rhythm in the editing suite, but let's get it right in a moment, um, like on a stage. You would have to do so. so that's two aspects that that is interesting because it's sort of it's a form of cinema that is sort of very much more related to the stage as other genres. Mm -hmm. um, so the songs were all pre-recorded, I suppose, and then a playback, and you know. So with the choreography, the song and dance, and also with comedy, I feel a lot needs to be very tight. How much room was there on stage, uh, you know, while filming for for uh, improvisation and for, or had it be very like all be very rehearsed and and followed the strict storyboards? Maybe well, Michael want to talk yeah. about that. Well, well, I mean, uh, Thomas and me, we have a, 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 a way of working where we try to prep everything in, in maximum detail, maximum storyboard, every, every millimeter is planned. And then on set, something better come, comes along and we put it all in the trash can. 
So um, it's basically the, 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 the way of working is that you, you, you prep and you make your homework as good as possible. So you have really uh, always have a good basic plan to work from. And then, you know, the energy of the set with great actors, with a great cameraman, um, with a great choreographer, you know, there's always something even better that occurs. And the mixture, that's, I think, the, hopefully the quality of the work that is a mixture. Because sometimes um, you see movies, for example, the, the, the early, early Tim Burton movies, like Batman, the Batman series, you can see that it's sort of done by many units after a precise storyboard. And it feels very, sometimes a bit wooden, let's say so, because you feel like it's a film storyboard. And that's, that's not a really, um, you know, desirable quality for me. So I think it's good if you, you get the visual quality that you can develop on at home, sitting at home, drawing storyboards and working with a production designer, et cetera. So you get a sort of, you, Get, get yourself into sort of iconic cinematic language, but then you know that you take all the energy that comes with the actors and, and everybody on set, and because so alive, I mean, there's a, a set where if you have great people to work with, it's so inspiring because everyone is trying to give something and bring something to the table. And it's good to, to, to embrace all these um, wonderful ideas and then sort of melt it together, but everyone sort of, appreciates if, if you come in the morning and you have a good plan. Like every, I think everybody hates creative film creatives that have no plan. So that's the, that's the mixture. I want to take the first audience question and I'm going to direct it to Michael because you said you've met Udo Jürgens in person after one of his concerts. So how would you describe Udo Jürgens and the songs of Udo Jürgens to someone who didn't grow up with them, meaning to an American who doesn't know them? <laughs> Well, I think uh, many Americans might know some songs by uh, written by Udo Jürgens because he wrote for like the greatest singers uh, of the, I don't know, I mean, 70s, 60s, 70s. Uh, Philip knows more about that than me. But um, I think it's a kind of mixture of a little, it's called like a Schlager, you know? It's like um, hard to translate it really. It's, um, I mean, how do you translate Schlager, you know? in in English, it's a mixture of um, high quality and very folk uh, near the people, you know what I mean? So you've mm -hmm. got songs by Udo Jungs that everybody knows. I mean, the grandmother sings it along and the children sing sing them. So this is a, a big quality. And then there are other, other songs that are really very, I mean, like jazzy even a little. And, you know, they, so he's got a, he's got a, wide range I think as a as a writer and a singer and he's a very good singer if you try to sing uh, one of his songs you will notice that it's very hard to get it right uh, because he's such a good performer too so yeah it's hard to describe the style maybe Philip you can do that better what is what do is you think he would compare to Tom Jones maybe or someone like that here in the US market well yeah, well, a little maybe. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Thomas, what do you think? Your father is a composer as well. You're very. I have no idea to, to translate this to the American music market. I think you've done pretty good, Michael. Yeah, uh, I another did, question. Did well. and, and I want to start with Thomas, but I want to ask that all three of you, you know, so basically the story is, um, you know, that. Um, Katharina Thalbach's uh, character has never been to New York and she wants to go to New York and it's this dream. And I know, Thomas, you come to uh, Los Angeles usually every year and like California. Do you feel that the cultural stigmatism about coming to America has changed in Germany um, over the last few years, uh, mainly over the last four years uh, amid the American politics? Or is it still like this dream, I want to move to, to America, I want to move to New York, Los Angeles. Yeah, so I have to say, if I'm going to, as a, for me, I, I go to, to Los Angeles. So this is, uh, I like the people there. I like the countryside. So, uh, and I think uh, California is something different to the rest of America. So this, uh, this political thing uh, happens only uh, on the, you know, Fox News and uh, Washington and all the, the middle uh, states. 
So for, I don't know, for a European going to America, this is New York, maybe Chicago, uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco. So these are all um, uh, um, uh, democratic, uh, Democrats, no? I think. This, I don't know, Chicago, but. Yes, whatever. yes, Illinois is very democratic. So for, for, for us, this is more familiar, yeah. It's not the, the same like in Europe, you know, of uh, uh, political, but uh, this is more familiar for us. Um, so I think, so I have no, uh, there was no, I don't know, bad feelings about going to Los Angeles because of Trump or, or not right now. Maybe we see the next weeks. <laughs> and for you, Philip and Michael, are you, uh, is it kind of uh, uh, US and moving to the US, does that have still some magnetism to you guys? Or uh, how do you feel about, uh, you know, also working in the US as an actor or as a filmmaker? Well, um, it is sort of, I've been, I've spent quite some time in Los Angeles. Um, and I always, you know, like like the courage of the culture here, and um, and I think it's to, to to speak very openly. I think it's like everybody over here was glad and and moved that finally this dark area of America seems to end or at least change. You know, I mean, this this I I've been in. Berlin when Obama uh, visited and people just it, it, I, it were like, you know, hundreds of thousands on the street and, and loved this president. And I feel that, you know, the, the, the I mean, the, all European countries who have had lost a friend during the last four years, um, you know, were totally sharing the joy you could see on TV. And I mean, I live in Berlin, it's the, um, it's the city of the Luftbrücke. Um, it's, you know, that, that there has been always a big friendship um, overseas. And, um, and I think that pays into the, um, the idea that America is such a sort of dream country for us. And it, it, it probably that has changed a little bit um, during the last four years. And that, um, you know, I, obviously when I, I go to Berlin, you know, like half of the city is um, speaking English and uh, there's so many Americans over here that sort of feel obviously in a way more at home in, in Europe. So, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm overjoyed that this might change now. And, um, and I think it's, that's the feeling of almost everybody I know. So I, I just hope that we get our old America back, the one we want to travel and it is, this is uh, our, has, to see, has again the magnetism that it had. Yeah, well, I can agree uh, with Philip. And the, the thing is, I've I've spent part of my studies uh, in in I was in New York City for about three months to do my thesis in 1997 or so, and I really very much uh, wanted to go to New York. There was kind of a dream, and I, I decided to go to the city to use kind, kind of the money that I got from the university to go to this place in particular and to go to Columbia University and, and do my studies there. So it was a place that I really wanted to be, uh, to be in and to see. Um, and I wouldn't mind uh, working in, in America as uh, whatever, as an actor or a writer or whatever, but my, um, my, the feeling that I want, has diminished had had diminished over the last four years to actually go and visit America to be honest so I mean and I don't think that this era is going to be over um, unfortunately I don't think so I just see what it's coming what's coming uh, and and what uh, the people are surrounding Trump um, how cowardly they are acting now so this doesn't sound very promising to me, but I don't want to, I mean, I'm, I'm also very happy actually that he got voted off. Very much so. Um, I'm sorry, I hope you hear me. We have a very, I have a very Los Angeles problem at the moment. Both my neighbors have leaf blowers that just arrived and they are going on the street, blowing the leaves from one side to the other. If you live in Los Angeles, you know what this is all about and they just arrived. So I, sorry for the sound. I just want to talk a little bit about future. What's up next for you? Uh, Michael, I, you uh, wrote and you are starring in a show called uh, Ostrovsky macht Urlaub. 
Uh, can you talk a little about <laughs> what that is about? Are we all going on vacation with you? Yeah, it's very, it's very strange in nowadays when nobody goes on vacation anymore. So it's kind of a documentary series that I, I kind of do. It's improvised and, you know, and we, the, last, the last show we did was in beginning of June. That was kind of the ending of the first lockdown in Vienna. So there were almost no tourists at all from foreign countries. And that was a really interesting way to see the, the Vienna um, again and, and to explore the, all the, the major sites there, you know, but without any tourism and with only very few people in the streets. But otherwise, I'm just uh, actually editing a, a movie that I did, which, which I, I co-wrote and starred in, and I, I directed as well. So this is just the thing that I'm doing at the moment. It's my job. And Thomas, you um, you worked on uh, Moritz Bleibtreu's directorial debut, Cortex, which is doing the festival run at the moment. Um, did you actually, did that come through because of Ich war noch niemals in New York or have you had the connection with Moritz before and worked on that film? Maybe a little, a little bit of that, but because, but he asked me on a commercial for Dahlmeier Cafe, uh, we did together. So, and after the shooting, he comes over and says, ah, we have to do, I have to talk to you, I send you a script and so, and, and then uh, we come together for that. So right now we're finishing uh, the Schach novelle, uh, the second collaboration with Philip. Uh, um, so I think the, now it's over, the color correction is done. So, and we are looking forward for the releasing, I don't know, maybe yes. soon, hopefully. Yeah, Philip, can you talk a little bit about Schach Novelle, Stefan's Zweig Schach Novelle, uh, what we can expect from it? And um, do you know where we need that yet? Or was that pushed now with COVID? Well, Nobody knows, you know, it's, it's, a fo it's a foggy terrain right now. I mean, Austria has a complete shutdown till today. Um, here, over here, theaters and, and Germany, theaters and, um, and, and, um, and cinemas are closed. So I think everybody's really hesitating to predict anything. So it's a, it's a, it's a really, really bad moment for, 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 for cinema right now. I mean, that's, that's for a time people were hopeful because they were saying, okay, maybe we can, um, you know, release local products, local films, because that, that there's no American product that is blocking the, 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 the cinemas. So, um, but right now, I, I think everybody's really, I don't know, totally depressed to be in this second wave that is causing so much. So it's, it's I, 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 for the Schach Novelle, um, you know, if, if a fun thing about Schach Novelle is that it's again on a ship going to New York. So it's, it's kind of the, the total dark side of the, of the same metal. Um, so, and it's, it's a, you know, Thomas and me, we're really proud on the movie. You know, I think it's a very intense piece of uh, filmmaking and uh, there's great acting in it. So, and it's, but it's very, you know, it's a, it's a very um, claustrophobic, and, and uh, psychotic dark piece. So it's, but um, you know, distributor likes it, you know, we, 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 we're wondering if it's, you know, what is better this time? You know, you do a release, you go on festivals, you sell it to a screener, a, a streamer right away. You know, for us, you know, it's, um, it's, it's we want the movie to, to reach people. What's the best way? I think in these days, nobody can tell. You just mentioned, uh, you know, most European countries and, you know, Austria just announced the total lockdown now for the next three weeks uh, with Ausgangssperre. Uh, how, how has uh, COVID-19 uh, influenced uh, your work and uh, have you been able to continue working? Um, and, uh, and also, especially you, Philip, how do you see the, the future of cinema and live theater and operas? How, where do you think this is going now that everyone is home and is so used to streaming and watching content online and missing mm -hmm. that, uh, the feeling of community and watching the, you know, the social aspect of watching together? Where do you see this is heading? Well, I, I um, you know, before, you know, second lockdown, I, um, uh, went to the theater to see Kathi Talbach um, and Andrea Schneider singing. They do, did a little singing evening in a, in, a, in a large theater in Berlin. And obviously it wasn't, um, you know, it was only one third full with audience, but it has such a 
magic and like everybody so it was so so you know it was an intense feeling to finally see the stage coming to life again and i i i i don't think that will vanish i think the, you know um if I, I i strongly believe and want to believe that the um i don't know english term vaccine the impfung right. yeah it will yeah will, vaccine impfung yeah Yeah, the yeah vaccine. Um, it will, you know, change and turn things uh, in the first half of the next year, and um, I think we'll go back. And I think we'll, people will want to go to the, you know, experience a movie on a big screen. I think they wanna see people singing for them, actor acting for them. I think this is, you know, I mean, the opera and the theater. It's basically three thousand years old. It it won't vanish because there's a plague. I don't believe that. I think it's um, maybe you know. I mean, as streaming is getting bigger and bigger, and but that's you know don't need any pandemic for that. That's just um, you know the things shift a little bit. But I think the 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 art of of, of a movie screen and the art of an opera singer and a theater person. Um, this is a is it's such an archaic desire that we wanna as people we wanna experience things together. And feel the energy in a room, um, and share a feeling in the same more exact moment, because you know we all watch a lot of series in on the streamer, and it's just you know that the way we experience is that that you would go and talk to people, and he would recommend a series, and then you would watch it alone at home or with your family or your mate, um, and and it's just that the power of like one thousand people experience and laughing and being frightened at the same exact moment. That is a, that is an energy that um, you can't replace. So that's, I'm I'm very hopeful that this this will this this uh, this art is too old and too archaic to uh, to vanish. However, and I hope know, that in sorry. Uh, however, you know many freelance people are suffering right now, as film people in the states. It's a nightmare for in in terms of you know what what the, the pandemic does to people and. Um, We, as the, the ones who are fairly lucky and can proceed working, we should never forget that. And many people that really, really are in deep trouble right now. Have you, Thomas and Michael, been able to work over the last few months? Or was uh, how, we, I mean, is production coming to a complete standstill, like here in Los Angeles? Or, or is there actually filming going on? <laughs> Actually, uh, there was a reunion with Andreas Bohaska uh, uh, in August and September for me. So we did a TV um, uh, film together in South Tyrol. So uh, back to the roots um, with nice. uh, Tobias Moretti. <laughs> Once again, back to root. Um, and uh, in, I, I think we in Austria and Germany there are ways uh, to 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 film safe. Uh, you have a safe set, so you test a lot. So there are some uh, you have to wear a mask and so and so on. So there are ways to do something, and also there are many many uh, shows they have to do. Uh, they have to shoot something because they need content uh, as more as uh, years before. Um, but it's not easy. And this lockdown now, it's in Austria and hopefully not in Germany. But in Austria, it's hard uh, for the film business. Um, yeah. I think uh, uh, Mike, Michael, you have to get it. You should also. I mean, uh, it was for me. It was really crazy, to be honest, because I kind of sealed all the deals right when the first lockdown started in mid March, and then I started shooting like uh, beginning of August until almost yeah, mid September. So I did my movie, and then I did another show. In I mean. I, I kind of was shooting throughout the summer until now, and now I've just done commercials as a director, which is cutting them, you know, it's like mm -hmm. really, but I know this will be the last thing that I've done, I'm sure, for a long time. And I've been tested twice or three times a week now for um, three or four months, I think. So, and I'm gonna have another shoot on Monday, which we had to break up because there was people tested positive uh, two weeks ago so this is whole thing is coming back uh with a uh, vengeance now i think but i mean i was lucky to be really to be honest to be to have been working 
We unfortunately have to wrap up the panel. So we don't stop with COVID-19. I have a little quiz for the three of you. I want to find out who the ultimate Udo Jürgens fan is in the group. So I'll <laughs> ask you a few questions and you just have to scream out the answer and we'll see who it is. Okay, Dad. So which of the four friends is missing here? Marie, Liliane, Mathilde. From the uh, bit ah, of bitte mit Sahne. Maximiliane. No, it's Ottilia. You changed uh, the for yes. the movie. Maximiliane <laughs> is in the film only. <laughs> and which of the three lived the longest? <laughs> That's mean. <laughs> that <laughs> was Liliane. Oh my goodness. What is the name of the band that accompanied Udo for many years? The band? Yeah. It's an orchestra. Ah, uh, it's the, the... What? Beatles. The Beatles. He knew Lina. it. No, it's the yeah. Pepe Linhardt band. Pepe Linhardt. Michael Lina, Lina, of course we know that. <laughs> Pepe Linhardt, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, which song did he win the 1966 Eurovision Song Contest with? Merci, uh, merci. Merci. <laughs> Michael is the ultimate fan. He will oh. win this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much. I'm so sorry we couldn't do this in person. And I certainly hope that in 2021 we'll have a German Currents Film Festival again at the American Cinematheque and mm -hmm. the Egyptian Theater in Los Angeles. And we'll welcome you with Schach Novelle, hopefully. Um, we have another virtual panel, the second virtual panel, my friend Helen Hoene, the Vice President of the Hollywood Foreign, uh, Foreign, Foreign um, Press Association is moderating a woman uh, panel tomorrow with uh, four women directors from America and from Germany, uh, talking about the state of the industry. It's a transatlantic dialogue tomorrow at 11. You can register for that panel and you can also still watch all the German Currents movies today and tomorrow by going to germancurrents.com. So I hope to see you tomorrow. And thanks again. Thanks for all your insights, for joining this panel. Thank you so much, uh, Philip, uh, Thomas, Michael. Greetings to Berlin and Vienna. And thanks so much for joining. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye-bye.